This week on the Archer's Choice, we packed up the team once again and headed due north. Up to Atacokan, Ontario, way up there, eh? With Fern Duquette, the Moose Man himself, and Cash Boy Outpost. Now, folks, you talk about an unbelievable hunt. We've been doing this for a few years, and it just seems like it keeps getting better and better. And we're only talking about going just over the border in Atacokan, Ontario. We are bow hunting moose once again on a budget, eh? Eh? Despite being driven from much of their original range, and we're not talking about hunting pressure, rather man's encroachment on the moose's territory. Today, however, the moose is thriving, and closer than you might think. Some of the best hunting is just north of our borders in the great country of Canada. For many a moose can be seen in the province of Ontario, and surely one of our favorite spots and moose guys is Fern Duquette of Cashaboy Outpost, just out of Atacokan, Ontario. Not only can this be a very affordable moose hunt, but once you try hunting these giant critters, you'll be back and back and back. You get what we're trying to say? Bow hunting moose is addictive. And you never know, you might be spending so much time up there, you might be saying, hey, too. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Let me tell you, if you ever get the opportunity to hunt with Fern, be prepared. He's a nut. The guy's crazy, but that's what makes this all fun. And you know, whether, you, whether you're having a bad day of hunting, which I don't know if there's really such a thing, but this guy and all of his people can make you just change it around and have a blast no matter what the situation, no matter what the weather is, you're gonna enjoy yourself. I don't know if that's safe. When we talk about moose hunting, there's a few things. A lot of times going up to Canada and you're trying to do it on a budget, you're going to do a drop camp. Don't think that you have to be a, you know, this, this professional experienced caller. A cow moose call sounds something like Something like that. Now you put a horn to that and you'd be amazed at how that sound will carry. And all of a sudden in the distance you're going to hear Plus, and they're coming in. The other thing you want to remember is we're so attuned to looking at a regular deer. We know what a deer looks like at 20, 30, 40 yards. This moose that's coming in probably weighs about seven or 800 pounds more, stands a lot higher, has a big rack, comes in, and you literally can be so shaken up that that animal, you say, oh man, he's only 25 yards out. That animal could be 40 yards out because you're so used to looking at a deer. So remember, you want to use your range finder. You want to remember that you don't have to be an expert or professional calling, because you can make it happen. Bow hunting moose on a budget. If you remember last year, we had an incredible hunt. Fern took a bull, I took a bull, and Vicki, well, <laughs> she missed. How could you miss a bull moose at 30 yards? <laughs> uh, let's not go there. <laughs> the bottom line is we had a great hunt, and what we have to realize is moose, during the rut, are very vocal animals. Not only are there cows calling and echoing across that water, the thing is, you can hear those bulls coming from a long distance off. Folks, you're looking for an exciting hunt. Whether you, if you're used to hunting turkeys, hunting elk, moose is a real easy transition except for one thing. They're only about four or five hundred pounds bigger than an elk and only about, well, eight or nine hundred and seventy-five pounds or so bigger than a turkey.
Shania, I think going. Oh, going. We go over here. Well, hey, I got lucky. Look at this boy. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Couldn't have done without you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Big and vital area at 30 yards, and you couldn't hit it. What's your point? <laughs> My point is, Vic, you couldn't hit it. I mean, we're talking about boom, we're talking about like a van in front of you. And you missed. Things happen. Well, was the sun in your just eyes? Was it wind too strong? I mean, okay. come on. Listen, just because I had a missed opportunity at a moose. That was well said, gone, goodbye, see you later, hasta la vista. It's out of here. No more. I've dealt with it for a year. Leave me alone. Okay. What about this year? I didn't have an opportunity. In case you didn't know, last year I missed a bull moose at 30 yards with my bow and arrow. It is definitely tougher than you might think. Yes, I know the vitals are huge and everything else. Hey, it's done with, it's gone. Everyone had a lot of fun for the last year. One of the things that you need to remember when you are going bow hunting for a large animal, whether it be moose or elk, is you need to remember the size of the animal can confuse you on your yardage. Remember that, those animals are so much bigger, they could be, you know, 10, 20 yards further than you really think they are because they're such a large creature. When I saw this bull coming in, I got so excited. I, before I could even see him, I could hear him. You can hear him walking through the swamp. He's like, he didn't, he didn't do, do too many of the bull runs, you know, like, oh, oh. but I heard him splashing all over the place. As he's coming in, I, my adrenaline started pumping. I knocked my release onto my string. I was ready to go. He came in and he stopped about 50 yards out in the middle of this little pond that was only probably up to his knees, but probably up to my chest. He stopped, decided he didn't want to come any closer, and left. As soon as that bull stopped and started walking away, in my heart, I, in my head, I kept thinking, please, you're just gonna turn, come back, give me another chance. But he didn't. He stopped, he looked around, and walked away. And that was the end of it. It was so heartbreaking that, you know how when, when you're a kid and you have a really big balloon and you're real happy and you're playing with it all day long and then someone comes around and pops it? That's what it feels like. Most of us can relate to deer hunting, obviously because they're in our backyard. Many of us don't have moose in our backyard, so we have to travel. But once you do this, once you get a little bit into the moose hunting, like we talk about a lot of the hunting, but moose hunting, it's a certain, it's like getting branded. <laughs> you get that Canadian moose brand put on you, and it's in your soul, and you, you, you can't wait to get up there again. To see those fall colors on an early, an early fall, not like we have to wait here and to see this incredible massive animal coming into your call and knowing that just with one little stick and string you might put this giant monarch of an animal down man it is just it is just the experience that stays with you forever We want to share with you this hunt, but we have to understand that things do happen. We, we were paddling, we paddled in, got all set up, everything's working great. We go to unload the canoe and we drop the camera in the water. And we didn't know what to do. I mean, we're not sitting there with a backup. Everything, your heart's, everything's like a knot. 
the hunt happens. You couldn't picture perfect. That's why we're sharing you this footage. It's a little screwed up. I'm not lying. I mean, I'm not coming here and tell you. No, we screwed up because we dropped the camera in the water. But we have to share this footage. This bull is 40, 30, 20. He's 18 yards or less from me, and I take him. Oh, you talk about an unbelievable experience. But what are you going to do? We accidentally dropped the camera in the water, and we have to make the best of any situation. from the distance and we could hear that he's coming fast. Boom, all of a sudden we, he appears out of the spruce. He's at 40 yards broadside. I come to full draw, I'm ready to take the shot and I read his body language. It's like, no, he sees the decoy, he wants to come closer. 30, 20, this bull, this massive animal is standing less than 18 yards from me. I'm at full draw and everything rushes through your mind at this moment. Your adrenaline rush, everything you practice for, everything you prepared yourself for is right now. The shot was there, the adrenaline just escapes you. You watch this animal run off and you start to realize that this is a massive animal. Folks, hear me out. The fun stops right when you release that arrow on a big moose like that. Because you realize right after the shot, <laughs> the fun stops and the work begins. You gotta get that giant of a critter out. Murphy's Law. If it isn't one thing, it's another. It's just animals are working right most of the time. Mother Nature was doing well. My shooting was on. Okay. But this time, what went wrong? The cameras. And you know what we learned on this trip? We learned that cameras don't like to swim. No, you start mixing electronics and water and it just, it's a, it's a bad deal. It is. And we want to thank Fern and all the guys up there and, and girls yes. at Cash Boy Outpost for a great adventure and a lot of fun. And we also want to thank you for watching The Archer's Choice and taking time out of your busy schedule. So remember, come back here next week, same time, same station, right here on, on The Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.